Hello, hello. Welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show. Oh my goodness. It is, what's the date today? It's today is July 29th, 2019. My hair is extra tall. And um, I called this show my new favorite tool, and no, it's not my vibrator. Uh, because I just got finished facilitating a two and a half day talk to the entities class. And right before that, I did a four day foundation class. And right before that, I did a four day foundation class. And so I, there is a lot of, a lot of change going on and a lot of awareness about the tools and what's required to actually create your life going on. And I wanted to chat with you about it a little bit, by the way. I have a free call happening today that has nothing to do with this topic except everything to do with this topic happening in about two hours from now if you guys are live, for you guys that are live, and I see you guys joining, so thank you. And um, so if you want to jump onto that, it's crystaljoycrawford.com slash free dash gift, I think. If you can't find it at that link, just go to my website and you can sign up for it and you can come join us on that too. That's going to be a call around um, marketing to engage. And... Um, Anyway, but I, I, I do actually want to riff on this a little bit today. I see you guys. Hi, Heather. Hi, Tanya. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Rose. Hi, Aurelia. Hi, Chris. Hi, Doreen. Hi, Frank. Okay, cool. So we have had, I mean, because I've been facilitating so many classes lately, there's been a lot of conversations coming up around what it takes. <laughs> this is Crystal Crawford. Yep. What it takes to actually create for yourself a space where a different choice is available. Um, my favorite thing about access consciousness is the fact that the conversation is always really around choice, that you always have one, that your choice has got you to where you are today, that you always have another one, and that no choice is right or wrong or good or bad. And coming from a background, a very, very religious background, this there's no right or wrong choice or good or bad choice in the beginning was really challenging. Not only because it like, you know, slaughtered all of my sacred cows, but it also challenged me in the sense that I was so used to trying to be right. And even when I was fighting for the fact that my wrongness was right, I wanted to be right. And we ran into a lot of that to, uh, over these past few weekends in all the classes. Because it really doesn't matter um, what topic you're facilitating around. So I'm starting to facilitate around the spirit world and talk to the entities, this like, talk to the entities class. And, you know, but the conversation, no matter if you're talking about spirits or other entities without bodies, or if you're talking about horses, or if you're talking about business or talking about money, um, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter what the conversation is around. It always, always, always turns out to be a conversation about awareness and choice. And so I'm going to, I need to, I need a pretend drum roll because my favorite tool of the day, somebody asked me the other day, like what my three favorite tools were and none of them are on the technically on the access consciousness tool list, except I realize they're just extrapolations of it. My favorite tool lately is something we're going to call never mind. <laughs> and I actually got this. I think I actually got this from Gary Douglas, but I, I got it for a lot from hanging out with my good friend, Stephanie Richardson. And um, because I, we would just be talking about things and hi, Fatma, nice to see you. Hi, Marcella. You know, and one of us would stumble on a point of view or one of us would stumble on or start telling a story or one of us would stumble into a thing that we were doing that was limiting us. And the first thing out of our mouth became, never mind. You know, so I remember there was, I mean, there's, I have so many examples of this, but you know, there was one, I think I was, I think I came over one day to her house and we're just shooting the shit and she's like, how are things? And I'm like, they're good, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then I was like, or no, she asked me some question or something. And I, I really, I looked at the question and I was like, well, to answer you, I'd have to tell you a story. So never mind. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like. And, and so it became this thing that has turned into this thing that I use in my daily life. And I'm going to, I want to sort of tell you how I use it so that maybe you could use it too. But I want to preface telling you how I use it with why I use it. And that is that your point of view about anything creates your reality. Your point of view about anything creates your reality. So it doesn't matter if your point of view is super conscious and you hear yourself saying, uh, well, I have this point of view that fill in the blank. Okay. You've got a point of view. 
Or if your point of view is a little more unconscious in the sense of like your life keeps showing up in a particular way and you know there's something creating it, but you're not actually sure what it is. Um, either way, your point of view is creating your reality. Hi, Marcella. So a lot of the conversations that I have as a facilitator with class participants are around like, well, what's your underlying point of view creating this? Because when you have a thing showing up in your life over and over and over, you have an underlying point of view always. It's just always there. And so that's a really great question to ask yourself, by the way, like what's my underlying point of view creating this? Because what you want to get is to the awareness of what you're creating from. Every point of view that you take has an energy to it. And it can either be the energy of like total expansion, total possibility, total space, total contribution, total ease. Or it can be this really limited, crunchy, hard, negative-ish energy point of view. And if it's crunchy, hard, and solid, it's not actually true. But that doesn't mean that you can't function from it. You can. You can function from it nonstop, 24-7. You can make it real for you. Um, you buy it. You perpetrate it on yourself. Like, it's this thing about points of view. And so when you're, when you're having a conversation with you about, like, how you change something, what is it then you need to be with yourself in order to change a thing? And, and, and what we kept coming to in all of these classes was, you know, somebody would ask a question and they'd say, well, I have this point of view and I would just go, well, never mind. If you got a point of view, never mind on the point of view. What other choices do you have? And so this opened up into a broader conversation of like, wow, first of all, I didn't realize how many points of view I was actually functioning from. Second of all, I didn't realize how many times a day, in a day I lied to myself. And third of all, holy shit, it's so easy to just change tracks. And that's actually what I found this tool does more than any other tool that I've used so far, is it actually in your mind, in your body, in your being allows you to just jump tracks. For anything not to be working, anything you have to have cut off your awareness and you have to have chosen not to choose. But that doesn't mean it was like this conscious choice. I'm just gonna choose not to choose. We don't actually ever really do that to ourselves because that would be stupid. But we will do that to ourselves unconsciously. And we will over and over and over go looking for where we're wrong instead of going to search for what's right about us. And my favorite thing out of the 80,000 favorite things that I have about access is that we are for the first time invited to start going to search for what's right about us. How many of you guys have spent your life looking for the wrongness of you as if getting to the wrongness of you is going to somehow get you to the rightness of you? I did it forever. I did it for years. I'm 40. I'm going to be 44 in like a week. My birthday's in a week. And um, that's what I did. And so I kept going to look for where I was wrong. And if somebody really projected at me that I was wrong, then I looked doubly hard because they definitely wouldn't have projected that I was wrong if I wasn't, right? And so I spent all this energy like looking for the wrongness so that I could root it out so that somehow I could be right. But the thing was, it never got me to the rightness of me. It never got me to the gift of me. It only ever got me into more pain and more hurt and more suffering. And so... As I was engaging with this journey of consciousness, consciousness, and consciousness isn't just awakeness. Consciousness is seeing and perceiving and knowing everything that is without a point of view, with no judgment. That's consciousness. So as I was, you know, going after this pursuit of consciousness in every area of my life, what, what started the first things that started getting a light shined on them were all the judgments that I had of me in all these different areas. You know, like I was bad with money and I was bad with this and I was bad with relationships and all I had failed at all these things. And I thought that was really getting honest with myself. And, and it was the first kind of layer of honesty of like, okay, I had made all these choices that had resulted in a lot of things that didn't necessarily seem great. But then as I got past those and realized that there's no charge on any of those anymore, right? Like as you use these tools and you go searching for what's right about me, I'm not getting, that's a question you can ask. Then you start to discover that there is more right about you than you've known. And you start to lose the charge on all these things you think are so bad about you. And what starts to show up in your world is all this space. Space for anything, 
that's the cool thing about like using the clearing statement in the access consciousness body of work that's right, wrong, good, bad, pod, poc, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. You know, we ask a question, we bring up the energy after that question, like what's the value of always being wrong and never being right? That's got an energy to it. For all of us, it's a little different. And so we go, well, everything that energy is that we can't articulate, define, put into words, everywhere we created it, right, never mind. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, poc, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. So we start wiping out the unspoken, unsaid, unseen, unacknowledged, undisclosed points of view like that. You know, we start asking these questions. We never mind them. Pock and pod, right, wrong, good, bad, pot, poc, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. And then what's left is space. Now, you are the space and you're also the creative source and up to certain points you've been the creative source of a lot of limitations me too but now I'm being the creative source of a lot of possibility how though how how do you begin to institute for yourself a reality of possibility when what you're so accustomed to is maintaining and entraining to a reality of limitation and a reality of I can't, and a reality of it's hard, and a reality of, of I'm afraid, right? Those are the realities that we put a lot of our energy into maintaining and in training. And I've talked about this before. I mean, we live in a, a very, very point of view soup. Everybody around us has points of view. Everybody around us is doing judgment. Everybody around us is like projecting and expecting all these things. And so, you know, we grow up in that soup and we learn how to do it really well and perpetrate it on ourselves dynamically. But as you are taking these classes and you're running these clearing loops and you're asking these questions, what shows up is a lot of space. And now is the time if you're willing to engage in a different conversation with you, but what is it? And you've got to discover what that is for yourself. But the conversation that's been showing up in a lot of my classes is actually taking yourself on an adventure of living, not of surviving anymore. Because that was my adventure before, and it wasn't really much of an adventure, too, if I'm honest. <laughs> it was a, a coping, you know, 38 years of coping and surviving all the shit that I had had to cope and survive to get to where I was, you know. So adventure of living was, like, so far out of my reality, I didn't even know where to start with that. And, and yet, here I was, lots of space, after using interesting point of view, I have this point of view for every single thought, feeling, and emotion... And who does it belong to for every single thought, feeling, and emotion? I was all this space, and now it was time to actually look at, well, now what? Okay, so I, I cleared out a bunch of stuff. Now, in the creation of my life, instead of the coping of my life, I, I got to do, what is that? And the first thing I'd invite you to do, if that's where you're at, or if you're at any part, in any part of this process, is just ask. Ask the universe. Hey, what is the adventure of living for me? Now, as you begin that, and you start choosing in that direction as that, as that new energy, as that new space, stuff's going to come up. It just will. It just will. As you choose to be greater in whatever that is for you, whatever way that is for you, maybe for you today is just being greater than you were yesterday. That's amazing, by the way. Maybe today greater is beginning to write that book. Maybe today is, you know, starting that business. Maybe today greater for you. It'll look however it looks for you. But in that choice to be greater than you were yesterday, in that choice to really institute interesting point of view as a reality for you and really use it, in that choice to really go, I don't care what the fuck it takes. I'm having consciousness no matter what I have to do or be. Stuff's going to come up. Points of view are going to come up. Negative beliefs about yourself are going to come up. Other people's opinions about what they think are the negative beliefs about you are going to come up. All the shit that could stop you, that you could use to stop you, will come up. This is where my favorite tool comes into play. Because you guys, like, you've watched, you've kind of had a privileged seat in my world over the last couple of years in that I'm pretty public about my journey. And I would say in the last, you know especially the last year, I have changed everything. I've changed relationships. I've changed where I'm living. I've changed my hair. But more than that, I've changed what I'm being with me. And I've made big demands of myself to be what it is I know I can be and to create in the world what I know I can create. And so 
every single time I've done that in every single moment, I've had to use tools to actually continue to support myself in that choice. And Nevermind's been one of my favorites because what's happened is like, you know, you choose to step up and facilitate a new class. For example, talk to the entities. New class, I'm facilitating with new beings. I'm, I'm my awareness is increasing times a godzillion of all the beings around the planet. Like all the futures that I'm creating by the choice that I'm making. There's a lot going on. And so it's in those moments that the shit starts to rear its head. Doubt shows up. Um, fear starts to show up in this weird way. Um, maybe I'm not a great facilitator starts to show up. It's weird. It's kind of weird actually, because in the moments where you're actually being all that you are, all this other stuff that's exactly the opposite of what you're being shows up. And so what do you do with it? Do you let yourself get swept away by that? Or do you look it straight in the face and go, never mind. That's not true. That's a lie. Who does it belong to? Me or someone else? Never mind. And you keep moving forward. I get into a lot of conversations about people that are like, what's stopping me? I don't understand what's stopping me from like stepping up or being great. And I'm like, well, you are, you are. And when you stop at a point of view or you stop at a fear or you stop at a doubt and you just sit down in the middle of the street and go, oh my God, it's a fear, it's a doubt. I can't do this. You know, that's when the world gets less and you get less and everything shrinks and you know, everything gets less. And so you don't get to have you anymore. You don't get to have the greatness of you. You don't get to have the joy of succeeding in the way that you'd like to succeed. You lose you. So never mind. Never mind. What other choices do I have here is my favorite tool right now. <laughs> never mind. And you can literally use this tool for anything. I don't know if I recommend using it out loud except between your closest friends, maybe, that where you both know the tool, and it's funny, because you could also sound like an asshole and be an asshole to someone else. Um, but for you, the moment you start buying something is the moment it becomes real. And the thing is, it's never real until you buy it. Judgment of you is never real till you buy it. Somebody else can't even judge you, and it won't, I mean, somebody else could judge you, but unless you have it as real in your world, it's not gonna even stick to you. But if you've got it as real in you, your world and somebody judges you, guess what your favorite tool could be? Well, never mind. Is it true or not true? No. And here's where we get into a bigger conversation of what are you willing to begin controlling for? I've been talking a lot about this on a lot of my calls lately. What are you controlling for? Are you controlling yourself to try to find the validation for how wrong you are? Because when you ask a question like, why is this happening? Why am I so fucked up? Why can't I do this? Every why question you ask that has that energy to it leads you to just, well, find out what it leads you to. Does it lead you to more space and possibilities? Or does it always lead you into more limitation and stories? Um, and if you're asking questions like that, are they actual question? A true question is gonna do this thing in your world, hi Lene. It's gonna do this thing. A true question opens up more space for you to be. A fake question, conclusion with a question mark attached, always leads you into more stories and more reasons and more justifications and more judgments. So that's how a lot of us are using our ability, our creative ability right now to lead us into more judgment of ourselves. And all of us that I know are control freaks of magnitude. We all have an ability to be controlling as fuck. And there's a lot of conversation and asks about, well, I just wanna be out of control or can you, I wanna let go of control. Okay, cool. On the one hand, that's true. On the other hand, you're always gonna have this ability to control. And what are you gonna be controlling for? Are you gonna be controlling to be right about how wrong you are? Or are you gonna be controlling to be free? And total freedom is actually consciousness. Consciousness is this where everything is noticed and nothing is judged. That's total freedom. Where you have absolutely every choice in the book. You have the choice to fail, you have the choice to succeed. You have the choice to be, you have the choice to not be. To be or not to be, that's your actual choice. Um, and so what will you choose? That's where you begin to use your control. And that's why I love this tool. Because this tool actually empowers me, empowers me to access my ability to control me 
into a totally different space of choice. So the moment, you know, there was a moment after I was facilitating on day one of Talk to the Entities that I started going into the wrongness of me. And man, I could go and do a whole video on that when it comes to facilitating. Almost every time when you've created the greatest miracles, you will judge yourself. So thankfully, I've done this enough and I know enough that as it was occurring, I had amazing things in my head like that. Like, oh, and so I could ask myself different questions. I'm like, how many miracles did you create today? Holy fuck. How many futures did you change today? Oh my God. You know, I could actually be with me in a different way because I've been doing this for a while now. And so I've like, you know, built some muscles, thankfully. But I also still had to use some tools. And this was one of my favorites as the stuff started occurring in my head. I was like, that is that mine? No, never mind. And literally just change tracks for myself instead of indulging and allowing those thoughts and those feelings to actually sweep me away into the sea of unhappiness. I just changed tracks and you have that ability if you're willing to have it and it takes the choice to practice it because this is what I'm telling you now is after about two years of being really fierce with myself and not actually allowing me to get swept away and all of that shit that can come and sweep you away. It's not yours. It's not true. But in those moments, it can feel real and true. And what are you going to choose in those moments? This is where the strength of you and the courage of you becomes a vital resource. None of you would be here, actually, if you didn't have the strength and the courage. You wouldn't. You probably wouldn't even be on the planet if you didn't have it. But now how are you going to use it? And what are you going to use it for? Are you going to use it to go validate how wrong you are? Because you can use your strength and courage to find the wrongness of you. Or you can use your strength and courage to, in the moment you start having a feeling and a thought that isn't expansive, spacious, joyful, you're like, never mind. And you, what else can I choose here? And you literally just change tracks for yourself. And sure, you can do 13s if somebody asked about that. Or you can use this tool. Or you can do whatever it takes. Because this is just another tool you can add to your toolbox. Um, do whatever it takes to have the space of you again, to have the joy of you again, to have what you're truly capable of available to you again. Anytime that you are in doubt or fear or the wrongness of you, you're in a lie. Every single time. So you can continue to put your energy in trying to find out why or what the problem is, or you can go, do I actually have any problems? And what would it be like to just choose something else? Just choose something else. Now, is it always that easy? No. Sometimes it takes a little more effort than that. But this is where the work comes in. The work for creating the space for you to get to be. Without you being able to be, if you are in the judgment of you, you are not being you. You're not being. You're actually negating, disempowering, hurting, killing you every single time you're in the judgment of you. So is that the world that you want to create for you? You get to be the creator of what happens next. Are you willing? The awareness challenge that I, you know, named and put a, put a website link to theawarenesschallenge.com is a question from Gary Douglas that I got from the Right Riches for You book. And it goes like, what would it take for me to be willing to live the energy of what I'd like my life to be so that it can show up for me in totality? And everything that doesn't allow it and all the thoughts and the feelings and the emotions and the no sex I'm using to absolutely refuse and reject the energy and the energy of the life I'd like uh, the energy I am in the life I'd like to be, something like that, I destroy and uncreate it all. Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, online, shorts, boys, and beyonds. And I love that clearing because it changes your life if you really use it. But also, like, I love that it starts with what would it take for me to be willing? Because what I realized as I ran that 30 times a day for 30 days, which is what he invites us to do, is I realized I hadn't been willing. And that right there, the unwillingness to actually have ease and the unwillingness to actually have joy and glory is really what we're dealing with most of the time. Unwillingness. 
So every time you let yourself get carried away with a reason or a justification why you can't, or a reason or a justification why things aren't working, or you are negating you. Why? For what reason will we keep choosing that? And it turns out there isn't really a good reason. It's just kind of what we've always done. And so all of these tools of access consciousness are to empower you and to empower me to change that, to choose something different right in that moment. That's why the 10 keys to total freedom are such a gift because they are the 10 keys to total fucking freedom. If you've got a new choice in every 10 seconds, then even if in the last 10 seconds you were judging you, then in the next 10 seconds you can choose something else. You can go, never mind. Never mind is like the culmination of the clearing statement and choice in every 10 seconds and interesting point of view and who does it belong to, like all wrapped up into one tool, which is why it's like my new favorite because it's just like, ah, oh, never mind, and changing tracks. And that's how quickly that you have the ability to change if you're willing. That's how quickly choice works. And it works to change the space you're being so that you can actually be the source of something different for you and the world. The more you judge yourself, the more you put evil in the world. The more you're willing to take up the challenge of who you truly are, which is that you are power and awareness and control and money. You are all those things. That's what's true. And taking up that as a challenge and using a tool to change tracks for you the more the world is a better, is a greater place. Not better, greater. Less judgment. And we're one step closer to creating a reality that where judgment, no judgment, consciousness could actually be a dominant reality. If all of us were willing to take up the challenge of who we truly are, and in the tiny moments that we start to judge ourselves, never mind. Consciousness would become a more dominant reality for us and for everybody. And that's the coolest thing about these tools for me is that because this is an energetic reality that we're living in, as we change the energies we're being with everything, everybody gets greater. So you don't even, you end up inadvertently changing the world even if you don't really care about that, even if that's not something that's even in your reality that, to do. Just by doing that, you change the world. So for me, that's really cool. <sighs> so that's it for today. If this was a gift to you, would you share it with somebody that you know could use a little bit of extra arsenal in their toolbox? And um, for those of you that are really desiring to totally change the space you're being with you, studying and applying the 10 keys to total freedom by Gary Douglas and Dr. Dane here is the greatest recommendation that I can give you. So share this video if it was a gift. Come join me on my free call later if you'd like to, and I will see you next week.